Hello again, welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Paul Schrumpf here with Eric Svogoy, back from the wilds of Louisville. Yes, the wilds of Louisville. Bourbon, bourbon a flowing a plenty, I must say. I'm glad you made it home. <laughs> I wasn't driving. <laughs> Great. That's awesome. Well, welcome back anyway. Well, thank you, Paul. Yeah, actually, the National Farm Machinery Show, obviously, uh, one of the biggest events indoor for uh, agriculture going on during the winter months. It takes place in Louisville at the uh, Kentucky Exposition Center. Uh, about 300,000 people, Paul, showed up this year. Uh, about 800 exhibitors on hand. Um, general, the mood was pretty good. Most of the folks I talked to on the floor seem to think that 2020 will be a better year than anyone anticipates, that things will be a little more smooth if the weather and trade cooperate on their side. Uh, the only thing I could I will add to that is I know that it looked like the exhibitors were definitely focused on the growers, uh, specifically I know in the past when I've attended the show, I've visited with companies that had applicator equipment on the show floor. This year, that was a little more scarce. Uh, there was a lot more tractors, a lot more spreaders for things like manure that I saw on the floor by companies that normally have applicator and ag retail equipment. So Paul, that's the only observation there, but uh, I know the folks at the show say it's doing well. They have a wait list of about 400 companies waiting to find some exhibit space on the floor. Hmm. Yeah, it's still highly popular. I know, um, <clears throat> and I think while you were there, I don't know if it was over the same time frame or close, but then um, the, the announcement the, and a bunch of releases that Bear came out with <clears throat> in terms of new products. Yeah, um, actually, yeah, we got something about that. Uh, apparently, Bayer has discovered a new herbicide molecule uh, it's now advanced to phase two in their R&D pipeline, but they're describing it as the first new uh, post-emergent mode of action for broadleaf weed control in 30 years. Uh, Paul, and they're actually saying that they're hoping to work on a biotech trait with this as well. So they're going to turn this new herbicide when it comes to market uh, into uh, something that would work with the cropping systems, uh, you know, a la you know, Roundup or Dicamba. Yeah, it sounded like um, from the press conference that it's going to be complementary to other products that they have. It won't be a next life, say, quote unquote, from the standpoint of a post patent kind of, or I'm sorry, uh, a broad spectrum kind of uh, kills everything uh, molecule. It's going to be something that um, something that has effective uh, is effective on specifically on some of the worst weed problems that we have right now. So as a cocktail with a lot of other uh, herbicides or other herbicides. Uh, and as biotech, I guess, progresses, they'll probably have more options on the seed side and who knows, but it's, it's something else in the mix, which everyone should be excited about. Yeah. And again, phase two of their pipeline, if I'm reading that correctly, uh, about five, maybe seven years, uh, we'll see this come to market. So we'll be watching this, uh, God willing, Paul. Absolutely. And most of you, you you know, going through the stuff that you were noting, uh, something about Landis, Landis Cooperative and a new... Yeah, actually, we've got a little news coming out of the cooperative systems. Uh, there's one coming and one going. Uh, the coming we have, Landis Cooperative, is now named a new CEO, uh, Matt Karstens, uh, formerly with uh, Truterra, a division of Land O'Lakes. Uh, he'll be starting as their new president, CEO, on March 9th. And then in the going department, uh, we found out that uh, Dave Christensen, who has been uh, in the cooperative system for 46 years uh, and has been serving as Mid-Kansas Cooperative's CEO and president for the last 16 years, will be retiring this April. Uh, so there's no new word yet from uh, Mid-Kansas on a replacement, but they're in the uh, process of searching for someone and hopefully we'll have someone named here by the time Dave is ready to step aside. So our uh, best wishes to Dave in retirement and uh, welcome aboard Matt. So Matt spoke at a couple of our conferences and when we were talking about uh, sustainability and you know some of the some of the early conversations we had by early I mean probably 2016 or so mm -hmm. uh, Matt spoke at a couple of a couple of meetings we've had and've had a chance to interview him a couple of times uh, with through the Truterra program so best of luck to you it's uh, I mean it's that's that's fantastic sounds like a really terrific opportunity and uh, I'm sure we'll be catching up with you down the road. Uh, just to mention too, I guess Jim Byram is uh, retiring from Michigan Agribusiness Association. Oh, I saw that. I missed uh, that one. Okay. So I have to have to give LinkedIn props on that one. I saw that one uh, that one coming there. But uh, Jim's been just a 
Um, he's led that organization for so long, and we 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 had the chance to to go to the conference to interact with him. He's he's a true leader. He's been a true leader for a long time. Congratulations on your retirement, and a terrific career. Yep, yeah, very good. So you had some news to share regarding well, one of the bigger items that passed through a. Uh, uh, you know, our, our uh, news system here recently? Well, I wrote an article on it on, uh, on crop life, but, uh, you know, the, uh, the climate tillable <clears throat> kind of breakup that happened last week, and it was just a matter of 24 hours, essentially. Um, and it built up a little bit. Uh, it was uh, uh, farmers were uh, getting solicitations from, from tillable uh, that <clears throat> they supposed uh, might have been uh, supplemented with uh, or it had information that would have been supplemented with with what climate uh, they were providing climate through field view, mm -hmm. and a lot of farmers collected disconnected those dots and decided that there was guilt before <laughs> there was really any proof at all, and uh, um, and climate ended up pulling out of the agreement or pulling out of the API just because they they felt like they needed to sustain grower trust. I mean, there was word that people that the farmers were pulling seed orders, and it was really going to wow. get really getting ugly out there. Um, and the unfortunate thing is, there's, as far as I found, there's absolutely no evidence that, that that's the case, that it ever happened. But, uh, you know, that's what happens is the power of social media and the Ag Talk, mm -hmm. um, the Ag Talk uh, forum online, uh, just absolutely inundated with, uh, with growers comparing stories and, and the conspiracies were out there. And uh, it was, I guess, nipped in the bud. But hopefully this doesn't have any long-term effect on data and data exchange because it's really important for these uh, for the data to get connected so that we can extract the value. Um, otherwise, it's not going to happen. No. I mean, there, there's, there's, <clears throat> you, want, you want it to be, yeah, obviously, there has to be privacy. And there has to be, uh, should, the data has to be honored uh, for, for who owns it. But at the same time, we can't just overreact when we think things have gone wrong, when they haven't. Well, that will be a conundrum I'm sure the industry will be <clears throat> dealing with going forward, uh, at least for a couple of years, if not longer. Absolutely. So, well, yeah. anything else going on? No, the only other thing to add is uh, if uh, you're going to be down in San Antonio during uh, the Commodity Classic coming up here at the end of February, I will be down there with a bunch of uh, folks from our company. So if uh, you have plans to be there and you'd like to meet, drop me an email and uh, we'll try to coordinate a time when I can come by and say hi and we can have a chat. It's going to be a busy conference. Yes, it I'm should almost, be. I'm almost slightly sad that I'm not going. I was going to say, I know I found out, you know, we found out this past week that Sonny <clears throat> Perdue, uh, Secretary of Ag, has confirmed he'll be the keynote again. So I know when he's talked in the last couple of years, the, uh, you know, it's been standing room only in the auditorium. So I'm sure it'll be again uh, this year in San Antonio that way. Look forward to his comments. Yes, me All too. All right. Well, that's it for this edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next week. If you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, Contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We'll try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.